Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. I am your host, Vasavi Kumar. I am so happy to be here with Dr. Kerry, realtor, investor, transformational speaker. I would just like to say, Dr. Kerry, first of all, it's so nice. I have just I just got the opportunity to meet you just a few weeks ago. So yeah. in person in Austin, and here we are just a few weeks later. As soon as I met you, I was like, first of all, wait, first of all, I'm just getting so excited. I'm not even letting you say hello to my it's okay. It's okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I just wanna say, when I first met you, I was like, okay, I love her hat. I love how she is strategically put in one part of her shirt and let the other part hang out. Like there was just, I saw you and I was like, this is who she is. Like, you know, when you can just look at someone and you're like, no, this is who they are. Like yeah. they're not trying to be anyone else. You could tell when someone is just fully being them. Cause there's just such a comfort about them. There's such a, like a calmness and groundedness. And that's exactly how I felt when I met you. So I'm just yeah. so happy that you're here today. How are you? I am good. I'm excited to be here. And I just want to say y'all like, when I first met you, same same energy, like the same connection. Like we were like latched to each other. <laughs> yes. And um, I'm just excited to be here. Um, thank you for sharing your platform with me today. And I'm just excited. And I'm just happy just one, just to be alive. Um, but two, to be able to inspire and help whoever is, is listening um, today. Well, you are a prolific speaker, so I know that whatever the words come out of your mouth is going to touch the hearts and minds of everyone listening. And for everyone listening, y'all don't know this, but before I start any interview or conversation, before I hit record, I always pray with my guest and I ask God to work through us so that we're not sitting here trying to just show this like, uh, like, you know, not allowing ourselves to be vulnerable, right? And this is called the Say It Out Loud podcast because I want anyone listening to know it's not perfection that we're after. We just want to be our best self, whatever that looks like, right? Really just be mindful of like who we're tapping into when we speak. I think a lot of times we, you know, I, I get guests on here, I get people on here and everyone's just like, just wanting to make sure that they look good for the audience. And it's like, that's awesome. We want you to put your best foot forward, but the real gold is when we share our shit, right? I always say our shit is our superpower. What's the thing that you're not willing to say to people? What's the thing that you're not willing to share? That's the thing that's going to set people free. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And I think that's also just sitting in your authenticity. You know, like when you said you first met me, had my hat on, right? My, my, one of my shirt, like pieces were like in my pants, right? Like half in, half out. Like I had to learn growing up how to truly be me. There were so many times in my life where I was faking it. Like I had this one friend when I was in college and we ended up parting ways because she was like, you don't know who you are. Wow. You don't know who you are. And that stuck with me for years. And I'm like, what is she talking about? Like, I, I feel like I am me, but I learned that I wasn't like I was changing it up whenever I would get around certain people. And here I am, 35 years old, truly sitting in my authenticity and knowing who I am and not giving a damn about who is in the room. Every space that I walk into, I belong there. You know, every person that I meet, I'm intentional and I'm yes. getting to know them and they're getting to know the real Dr. Carey or better yet, they're getting to know the real Carey, you yeah. know, like just take that even off. Right. Because yeah. we get caught up in those titles. But that is really about what I'm about is just showing up as me. And if you love me, you love me. If you don't, you don't. At the end of the day, who is for me is for me and who am I am for. I am for. So. That's it, girl. Like, <laughs> I have so many things that I want to say. First of all, to everyone listening who wants to be a better storyteller and wants to be on, you know, be interviewed and also be able to share their story. I just want to use this as a teaching moment. Just notice what Dr. Carey just did. I'm, I'm just going to say Carey. Is that OK? Go ahead. Notice what, no, notice what Carrie just did. It was beautiful. It was so seamless. And it was like, it was honestly flawless. I, I said what I was saying, and then I paused and I threw it over to you. And then you immediately were able to take that and then bring it into a story from younger days. So yeah. I, just, I, I love thinking in terms of stories. And I also love to even use these conversations as an opportunity for people to become better storytellers. Like, yes, I'm the host and I'm you know, controlling the conversation, but not really. I loved that I threw it over to you and you were, you immediately took the reins and you were able to bring in more of you to the table and you weren't afraid to take up space. You weren't afraid, yeah. this is your, your interview. So I just want everyone noticing that, like, don't be afraid to take up space. Don't be afraid to bring it back to you and share the story because 
what you just shared about your friend who kind of broke up with you. Yeah. I wrote this down. Um, <clears throat> when I was when I was 19 years old, I got kicked out of housing freshman year of college for smoking weed. I had two annoying ass roommates who got me. I mean, I, I listen, I got myself in trouble. Okay. But they, they ratted me out. They ratted me out. Bridget and Melissa. It's okay. They're not listening. Not to snitches, you don't say Bridget and Melissa. I won't say their last names, but it's on the tip of my tongue. I will not say that out loud. Anyway, my mom said to me, if you don't get your shit together, I'm not bringing you back into that college. You're going to come back home. And so she took me to India and we stayed in an ashram, which is like a Hindu monastery, spiritual retreat. And there was this woman there who was about 35 years old, Manisha. I was 19 at the time. And she said to me, you have no substance. She said that to me, you have no substance. And that really stuck with me. Just like how your friend said to you, you don't know who you are. Yeah. That really hit, that really stuck, that really hit home. That story that you just shared. I have a similar one. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. And like I said, it, it stuck with me because I was I was confused, mm -hmm. you know, but at the end of the day, I wasn't raised to want to love myself. I wasn't raised to know myself like nobody sat down and had that conversation with me. Um, a lot of things that I learned throughout my life, my older sister taught me. Right. Or or my grandmother taught me like my mom, and my dad. They didn't teach me life, you know, <laughs> they taught me how to make money. You know, that's what they were good at. <laughs> Not a bad thing. But at the end of the day, um, I had to really do some inner work, right, through therapy, through through coaching and things like that to really understand who I am and how could I can show up powerfully in this world. Like that was really important to me. So what we're really talking about here, which I know we wanted to get into, was the foundational piece of who we are, like getting to know ourselves and by the way y'all this is like a lifelong journey at 40 i'm outgrowing the 17 year old vasavi that sometimes still flares up the 24 year old vasavi like there i really need everyone to hear this because i think in our world of personal growth and self-help it just sometimes feels like oh there's this like finish line that we get to and i'm like the only finish line is literally when we're about to die that's how i look at it that is the finish line is when i'm dead up. Other than that, like, please be patient with yourself and realize, like you said so beautifully, like, if you're not invited, fine. If you're, if someone doesn't want you, that's fine. I always, I never get FOMO because I'm like, if God wants me to be in a certain room, hell or high water, I will be there. That's it. I don't get upset if people don't invite me because I'm not meant to be there. Yeah. So and that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Like, and this is why, like, getting to know yourself, loving being who you are being safe and at home within your own skin and body that's really the foundational piece wouldn't you say absolutely um and really just you have to understand yourself people like whoever's listening now i really need you to do a lot of inner work right mm -hmm. like what does that look like for you so mm -hmm. i can share what that looks like for me Please. And maybe yeah. that'll help you out yeah. so when I was going through my my personal development journey, you know, I'm still on it. I'm 35. Well, I'm still yeah. on it. Like, like Vasavi says, like, it doesn't end until you're done, right? Mm -hmm. Everything in between our dash is so important. And so therapy is important to me. Very mm -hmm. important. I meet with my therapist once a week, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's not in the Black culture. Everybody's like, well, you just got God. Just pray it away. No, I can't pray away everything. Like, I yeah. need to do some 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 deep work. And so I have God. OK, mm -hmm. but also I'm a therapist <laughs> and I have my coaches, I have my mentors. But that was so important to me was to to channel that childhood trauma mm -hmm. and the abusive relationships and things that I went through growing up so that I can be a better person, so that I can continue to pour into other people. Another thing is laying the foundation and getting to know you. You have to spend time with yourself. You have to spend time with yourself. I spend time with myself in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm praying, I'm meditating, affirmations, gratitude. I journal whenever I need to get something off uh, of my heart and out of my mind. Another thing that I just tapped into, I went on a solo trip, girl. All there right. You know. I, went, I went on a cruise. All right. It was a five day cruise. Shit, you were stuck on a boat by yourself. That's amazing. I was stuck on a boat by myself. And I had some reservations going. Like, at first I was good. Then I started talking to my sisters and I'm like, wait, like, you're going by yourself? Like, are you gonna be okay? Like, maybe you shouldn't go right now. And I had to talk to my therapist. She said, you cannot allow other people's anxieties and fears 
to dictate what you're doing in your life. She said, if you feel secure in that, you know, if you feel confident in that, you got to move forward. Mm -hmm. So I went on this trip. I had an amazing time, enjoyed some time at a lake, a beach, just reading and meditating and just being alone and really starting to really tap into a deeper level um, of who Carrie is. And it was, whew, it was powerful. And I wish I could have had a couple more days <laughs> for sure, but it was good. When you... When you went on this trip and you kind of heard, you know, and uh, listen, I want everyone to know this, right? Like when your friends, your family, they say stuff that's basically rooted in fear, you don't have to let it get to you. Like you can just see it for what it is. And my rule of thumb, honestly, is that I just don't go to people who, who don't have what I want. <laughs> I know that sounds really mean. But like, I'm not going to go to, and I, I'm not saying this with you, but like, no. I'm not going to go to somebody who is not living the life or having the thing that I want, or it's not the material. I'm not talking about the material thing. It's the being like how you be, how you view life. And do you, do you notice that with that, with yourself? Like as you, you know, it, cause you're married, you're married. Do you have children? I am married. Uh -huh. No kids. No kids. Okay. So, you, you know, a lot of times people feel like you know, when they get into partnership that they, they kind of lose themselves. You know what I mean? They lose themselves. They, they like, they blend with their person and they're just like, we're just one. It's just, and it's like, no. So like, I just want to affirm you and say like, that's amazing that you went on this solo trip by yourself and you didn't listen to what anyone else had to say. Thank you. I receive that. <laughs> I receive it because it was huge. And I can't wait to do even more. And my husband, he was okay with it. He was like, girl, go. Like, do what you got to do. We have never had that relationship where it's like, yes, they say, you know, two are two become one, right? Yeah. But I had to establish my own identity in my marriage. I can't just be, it's just Robert and Carrie. No, like, it's Robert, it's Carrie, and we are one. But at the same time, I have my own identity yeah. um, and I have my own life. I have my own dreams and he has his own and I support him. He supports me, but no, nah, like if I'm gonna go somewhere, I'm going. <laughs> I love that. And I, and I, so I would love to know as far as this way of being, like just the confidence and conviction in how you just said that, like, if I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go do it, right? Like there's no wavering. How'd you become this way? Can you, can you take us on that? journey of like, how did Dr. Carrie, how did Carrie become Dr. Carrie? How did Dr. Carrie become this woman who's like, yes, you're in a partnership. Uh -huh. Yes. And you're still your own person. You're going to take, I know so many women who struggle with just like taking a day off for themselves. Like you went on, a, not only did you go, you went on a boat, like a cruise ship by yourself. You didn't just like go to a little cabin down the street. And I was like, how did you become this way? What, what did you like? Let's keep talking about that foundational pieces that has made you to become the woman that you are today? That's good. Um, I really want to say I had to set some standards for my life. I had to set some standards for my life because I was letting other things and, and, and other ideas and people dictate what I was doing. You know, mm -hmm. like if my mom wanted me to go to this college, I went to that college, mm -hmm. you know, if, um, I was like, okay, this money is a good opportunity. Let me just chase this, right? But mm -hmm. I wasn't fulfilled and I wasn't happy. And I had to really get rooted in what brings me joy, what brings me peace, mm -hmm. what is going to bring me abundance. And when I got rooted in that, going through therapy and, and you know, investing in myself, honestly, with different coaches and being like, what is it that Carrie really enjoys? And allowing people to dictate what I'm doing, that didn't bring me joy. If anything, it brought me depression and anxiety because I was like, I don't know who I am and I don't know what I'm doing. So that was important for me is establishing standards of what brings me peace, what brings me joy, what brings me abundance and what brings me freedom at the end of the day. And last year, I walked away from my full time job. Congratulations. I was a, I was a teacher. I was an assistant principal. And it got to a point where I was like, I'm not happy. I love my kids. I love the work, but it was the adults and, and the politics and stuff that was getting in the way. And I was like, this isn't bringing me peace. This isn't bringing me joy. Um, and it's definitely not bringing me freedom. And I took a leap of faith. I prayed about it. I wrote it down in 2020. And then February of 2021, I said, I'm done and I'm choosing me. And there is not going to be anybody that's going to stand in my way. There's not going to be um, any opportunity that will stand in my way either. Um, either I'll accept it if it's for me or if it's not, then it's not. But I had to really get rooted in what brings me 
happiness at the end of the day. And once I figured that out, there's no stopping me. There's nobody getting in my way <laughs> at all. And clarity. Yeah. Yeah. Clarity, um, peace, joy. Those are my standards. If it doesn't bring me happiness, I don't want it. I don't want you in my life. <laughs> I don't want it at all. It feels like, as you say it, I'm like, absolutely. Yes. And I know for so many that kind of like <clears throat> standard and attitude of like, if it doesn't bring me joy and peace, I'm not going to be around it. It almost feels, um, I've had many women say to me that it feels almost self-indulgent to think that way, like, oh, who am I to complain? Who am I to, like, what, who are you to have standards? <laughs> like, oh, is that what we're really arguing about here? So I just really appreciate that you're willing to say that out loud. But one thing that I would love to hear from you and say out loud, I find with a lot of these conversations, this has nothing to do with you. It's just what I hear on other podcasts and I never want my podcast to be this way. I, I love the darkness. I love the shadows. I love the pain. I love the lows. And I have grown to love them because I can't really fully appreciate my highs and my joy if I have not experienced the polarity of that. So what I would love to hear from you, and because I'm, I'm sure you still go through these moments, that we all have those, what the hell am I doing moments. We all have these moments, even when everything is doing great. Even, yeah. we're, you know, I would love to hear about that from you. And the, and for everyone listening, the reason why I'm asking you to share this is because I think um, we're like, we've been given this picture that it's supposed to be rainbow and sunshine and fairies. And more often than not, you know, I'm not seeking the high like I used to, like the, like the dopamine hit being, a, you know, being someone in recovery, I'm not chasing the dopamine hit. And if I do, I'm chasing it in creative ways. Yeah. But the lows are the we don't talk about that enough yeah. you know what's that like for you you know being who you are today and sometimes still doubting yourself you know and i'm because it happens like that's what i want to yeah. say like, it does happen like i doubt myself every day every day i have some days where i'm like yes yeah, superwoman and like i'm four days before my period you best believe i'm like wanting to burn everything down I'm wanting to burn yeah. everything down because it's I'm um, hormonal. So what, okay, but we're handling that. What, what, can you share what that's like for us? Like, what is that like to be in those lows for you? Hmm. I've had so many low moments, philosophy. Like I could tap into to a few of them. Um, but if I, can I share just a little bit about my story? Is Absolutely. Okay? Say it out loud. Yes. Perfect. So, um, when I was uh, an assistant principal and what kind of drove me to like getting out, right? And and figuring out a plan is I was always focused on, you know, college and um, getting a career and being, having that stable paycheck or whatnot. Um, so I didn't have to depend on anybody. But what I realized is that type of mindset, that type of living, it's not realistic for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't bring everybody joy and happiness. And what happened to me was there's a lot of things internal within myself that I had to fix. But then there was a lot of stuff that was job related that brought me down too. So I found myself um, like in this deep, dark depression, right? Um, I would show up, be fake, you know, happy, smile, whatever, whatever. But inside, like if I go into my office, I'm crying lights are off. If I'm wow. at home, the, the blinds are closed and I didn't want to see any light. Right. So I remember it was October. Don't get me to line. I don't know what date. Um, but I remember pulling out of my reserve parking spot, <laughs> reserve parking spot and tears rolling down my face. I'm speeding down the highway, get home. And I'm like, today's the day. Today's the day. I don't, I don't need this anymore. I don't want it. Like nobody's going to miss me. It's okay sat in my garage for a little bit and with the with the garage door closed and then I said no let me not go with outside. the car running I hope no with the car was running car was running garage door was closed um and then I said no let me get inside let me let me try to shake this off right because I've dealt with suicide in the past and I rushed past my husband and I go and I take a shower get out you know how it is you take a shower like you everything's cry. better yeah. yeah everything's better so I was like okay cool let me let me get, let me just cry it out and got out the shower and, and instead of going to talk to my husband eating dinner I went and I grabbed my nine millimeter gun and I went to my closet and I turned the lights off and I pulled the gun up and I said 
this is it. I'm done. But then I heard a whisper from God and he said, I'm not done with you yet. I'm not through with you yet. And in that moment, I lowered the gun and I just yelled out. And I just said, God, like, take control. Take control of my life. I said, because I don't know what I'm fighting for. But I will live for you. And whatever I'm supposed to do on this earth, allow me to do it. Allow me to do it. And work through me. And it took several years. And that's when I was introduced to Patrice Washington around that time. And I heard her podcast and I heard her story. And I said, man, like if this lady can do it, why can't I do it? And I started doing a lot of work, therapy, you know, um, gratitude, affirmation, and just doing the internal work, the internal work, working out, um, eating better. And I found a side hustle, real estate, just fell into it, investing. And then I became a realtor. And in February of 2021, I, I, I basically, I pulled myself out of that dark place. It took me several years to get out of there, but I thank God each and every day that I'm able to wake up and I'm able to do what I love what I'm truly passionate about. And it was only God. It was only God. He's the only person I can give thanks to. He's the only one that provided grace. He was the only person that provided mercy to get me out of that dark place. And every day I wake up, the first thing that I do is I thank God. And the next thing I do is I go into the inner work the morning routine, the prayer, the meditation, the working out, the, the personal development, listening to podcasts or YouTube videos or whatnot that bring me me joy. And then I'm like, you know what? How can I serve my people today? What can I do? Can I drop a video? You know, like, can I plan this event? You know, what can I do? Because Sarah Jake says it best. The vision is the reflection of the need. So I feel like the visions that God has given me the, the foundations that I'm laying now are for a bigger purpose or for a greater need. And that is how I live my life. And that is who makes me carry because I am healed. I am whole. I am continually to work on myself each and every day. And I will never forget that moment when I was in my closet and the gun was pulled to my head and God said, I'm not through with you yet. Give me a moment. <laughs> Just, yeah. Sometimes you have nothing to say out loud. I just need to breathe. That was so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. I don't think I've ever cried on this podcast. I think maybe once in my... I'm so happy that you're alive. I'm so, I'm so happy. Oh, you, we should not be recording this four days before my period. Fuck, I'm a mess. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm so happy. Emotions that, are okay. Emotions are okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm so happy that you're alive. I'm so, I'm so happy that, you know, even though you, even though you, like, the voice of God was louder than the than the vo than the other voice that had you holding the nine mil i mean like that just shows like you did have a voice that told you to do that to put the nine millimeter to your head but you also had a voice that thank god you could still have access to and you could hear it that said that to you and i just i'm just so uh i love that i know you and that you're here on this today sharing I mean, this i received that i received it i and, just I, yeah go ahead no, I, I wasn't trying to make you cry at all. No, I love. I know emotions are real. Like so, I'm. I welcome those. Um, but yeah, I love to cry. It makes me feel alive. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think it's important for un people to understand that no matter what you go through, no matter how low you get, you can always get up, and you can always fight. Um, but it's so important that you fight for yourself. Because if you don't have enough fight, right? What are you living for? That could have been, it could have been easy to pull the trigger. It could have, but God said, no, 
So whatever it is, whatever purpose you have in life, whatever vision God has given you, you have to follow it. You have to follow it. You have to fight for your life. You got to do whatever you can to do self-care. Self-maintenance is cool. Getting your nails and your toes, that's self-maintenance. But I'm talking about self-care. Self-care is so important to me. Like if I need to take a solo trip like I did, I will do that because that's self-care. If I need to take a day off, I will take a day off because that's self-care. If there's too much chaos going on, you got to sit down and you got to relax. You got to take a moment to yourself because when things are spiraling all over the place and there's distractions all over, that's where I was. Everything was chaotic. Nothing was, was where it needed to be. And that's when I was ready to give up. So whoever is listening to this, please make sure you prioritize self-care. You prioritize yourself and you fight and you fight and you fight like your life truly depends on it because it really does. This should just, you know, you should just be the co-host for this because I'm basically done for the day. I'm like, <laughs> you, you can take over. Say it on my podcast hosted by Dr. Carrie because Vasavi is a hot fucking mess. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> See, you know what I love? And I, I tell this to all my clients and I say it on the podcast. We have the capacity to hold so much inside of us. I was just crying and I felt the deepest pain. And I also feel so jovial and lighthearted. And we don't, we get to our body. Our vessel is so vast. We can hold space for it. So what what I really got from what you said, so many things, Dr. Carey, is like, yes, we're going to have those lows and they may feel so debilitating, but just even use this interaction that I've had with Dr. Carey, like I was very touched and moved. I'm, I'm going to share what, what touched me about it, but I also am able to be lighthearted, not as a way to deflect. I felt my feelings. I said, I need a moment. And then I was able to kind of tap into this other part. So I just want everyone to know, like, the lows are not going to last. They, 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 you just It's a wave that you have to just ride. And I, I don't like saying this too shall pass because so many people feel like that's a way of bypassing. But it's not. In this moment, I just want to say just be with yourself throughout all of it and be open to that voice of God, whatever that sounds like for you, because that voice of God will save your life. It will. I want to say... Go, were you going to say something? Mm -mm, no, I. Mm -mm. I wanted to share why why that touched me on a personal level. My um my father's youngest brother, who I am dedicated dedicating my book, say it out loud to, and my th I'm dedicating it to my late uncle and my my first therapist when I was 12 years old. I went to her for eight, 16 years. Um, my uncle hung himself from a fan in India, and I was told about this when I was 10 years old, which I probably should not have been told 10 years old, how my uncle died. I knew he died, but then my father told me how he died, which is fine, whatever. But I remember at 10 years old, like my innocence was really shattered, right? It was like, I never realized that someone's mind could get them to that point. It just fascinated me like, wow, someone's mind could do that to them, could attack you to the point where you actually think that the only solution is to rid of yourself. And so then fast forward, 19 years old, diagnosed with a mental illness, bipolar disorder, uh -huh. where I was basically, you know, clinically diagnosed as crazy, right? People don't have much compassion for people with mental illnesses. Let's just be very real. We hear how people talk about people with anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder. I mean, there's just, it's, it's not very sensitive, right? So I was given this diagnosis um, but this is the grace of God for me is that, you know, two days after I was diagnosed, I went to Barnes and Noble and I remember, um, reading all about bipolar disorder. I was 19. I took my father's Toyota Avalon <laughs> to Barnes and Noble. And I said, well, if someone's going to say I'm mentally ill, I want to figure out how to heal myself. Mm -hmm. And so I found this book called the Tao, T-A-O, the, the, the Tao of bipolar disorder. And it basically said that the spiritual cause a bipolar bipolar disorder is that inside of us we have a conflict between god and ego between our higher self and our ego and it's this constant split between our higher self and this kind of lower by lower you know the, the the part of us that hurts ourselves and it's just in so much pain and they said the solution and the way to heal bipolar disorder is to become one with ourselves. How beautiful is that? Bipolar is two poles, and the solution is to become one with ourselves. And that's what I've set myself 
this my life since I was 19, even before, but 19 really set the tone for like, well, what do I need to do to come back home to myself? What does oneness look like? Now it's taken me 21 years and I'm still learning. I'm still learning what it's like to even be a woman, a 40 year old woman. Like, what am I supposed to be like? Who, like, who am I at this age? You know, when I outgrow, so I just, and the thing that I really wanna just say thank you for like saying this out loud, you just set me free when you said, healed you said i am healed and i am whole and you don't hear people saying that you hear people saying i'm still healing i'm still healing there are parts of me that are not whole yet like i just want to say thank you because i have been afraid to say that out loud like i feel healed and i feel whole um and because i haven't given myself permission to feel heal and whole i will continue to perpetuate things in my life that make me feel unhealed and broken but the truth is, if I'm being completely honest, which why the hell wouldn't I be, you know, here on Say It Out Loud podcast, I have been feeling that I'm not allowing myself to fully step into, I'm healed and whole by the grace of God. That's it. Like, Vasavi, we get to stop the torture. We get to stop. We actually get to stop this, you know, and just, and really lean into that. So I just want to say thank you on so many, on so many fronts, just for you being who you are and. I needed to cry today. I mean, I needed those tears down my face. I'm glowing. Thank you. You are glowing. <laughs> but I, I love that you said that and I receive it. Um, and that's something I'm learning too is I never knew how to receive. So yeah. me saying I receive it, like that's just my thing. Like I receive well, it. <laughs> good. No, I, I love that. I'm uh, when it comes to, you know, I'm divorced, been divorced for um, <clears throat> how many years? Shit. I don't even know. Eight years, nine years. And one of the biggest things for me that I'm learning, why I've struggled a little bit with dating is I don't know how to receive. I struggle with receiving, not I don't know how, I struggle with receiving from the opposite sex in a romantic container. So I appreciate that you're like saying those words, I receive and I'm gonna start doing that too. I receive. Yeah. Just say, I receive it, that's I it. Love and, that from one of, one of my coaches, so and yeah. You, and you don't have to do anything back. I don't need, just receive it. You can receive without having to get back. That's it. Because yeah, this is saying, when, you, when you're getting a compliment, it's like, you don't have to be like, oh, well, yeah, I bought this from Old Navy or I got, no, just say thank you and, yeah. and leave it at that. Or yeah. I receive it and leave it at that. You, there's nothing else that you need to do. And I think we overcomplicate things. Just I receive it <laughs> and leave it there. What's something that you've been wanting to say out loud, but you haven't and you get to hear for the first time? Ooh. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Man, I, I, I think there was this affirmation that um that I read the other day and I wrote it in my journal this morning is any space that I walk into, I belong there. Mm -hmm. Any space that I walk into, I belong there. I think a lot of times as women, we compare ourselves to people on social media or, you know, to celebrities and stuff. And it's like, even though you may not have that status or you might not have all those followers or whatnot, you are still somebody and you still have gifts and you have talents and you have things that you can bring to the world. And a lot of times we go to these conferences, we go to these events um, or network and we're like, I don't really know if I belong here. I don't really know if I should be here, but you do. And I have to own that every space that I go into I belong here. There's a reason I'm here. There's somebody I might meet. There's somebody that might meet me that needs me in their life, you yes. know, no matter the status. And we have to break those, break that down and realize you are worthy. You are who you are called to be. And you belong in any space that you walk into and you got to own it. So, so that's what I want to say out loud. <laughs> I, I love that. And I want to add something to that because I think this might be helpful to you and to anyone listening. So I, you know, I, before I go into like any social gathering, I'll, I'll take, well, it depends on, it depends on the intensity of what I'm feeling. I take a beta blocker. A beta blocker just lowers your blood pressure just a little bit. So my, your heart's not pounding out of your chest. It's prescribed. I don't abuse it. I take it only like if I go to a social setting or if I'm speaking on stage, it just, I don't want my heart pounding out of my chest. Like it just really makes me feel like I have no control. So it just like lowers, it just lowers the blood pressure. I know a lot of speakers who use it. It's not like anything bad anyway. So I do that to get my body just feeling kind of still on the inside. I'll breathe. 
And before I, okay, so you and I met at this event that was at the penthouse of the Four Seasons. Uh-huh. And I remember going up that elevator, feeling that way, Dr. Carey, I was like, oh my God, what am I doing here? I cannot believe I'm going to be at the penthouse of the Four Seasons. Oh my God. Am I like, oh, like, I'm literally like, like not knowing, like, is this really happening? Like, even, even though I was on the cover of Austin Woman Magazine, even yeah. though this is like pretty much an Austin Woman-ish kind of event, even yeah. though one would think, Vasavi, you belong there. I still, there's, and, and by the way, a uh, new level new devil right i've never been on a penthouse in a penthouse this is a new level for me it's a new, and i'm just saying it out loud like why do i have to freaking act like i don't have insecurities new level new devil yeah. so this is what i say to myself this is what i said to myself before i got out of the elevator i said three things first thing was boss of you belong here that was exactly that but the other two things that i say and i ask and i'll say this to god it's like who can i bless and who can i be blessed by today Ooh. Yeah, I love that. I oh, love I'm taking it. that. I'm taking Take, that. Receive I'm taking, that. I'm taking it. <laughs> yeah, so like, so here is like basically my, that's like kind of like my cure for social anxiety. It's those three things. It's like, I belong here. And then who can I bless? And who can I be blessed by? Because you're giving, but you're also open to receiving. So I feel like you blessed me. Just being around you, like being around you was just like awesome. Like I felt like I was... This is gonna sound a little egotistical. I felt like I was talking to myself. Like it was a great energy. It's like, I love you. I love you. You're great. Like it was just easy. And then like yeah. Alisa was there. And then like Terry was there. And I'm gonna have Terry on the podcast too. I'm gonna to have Elisa on the podcast. So, amazing women. And I just felt so lucky. I think the thing that I wanna work on is believing that I am blessing others too. You got what I'm saying? I'm very much like I'm blessed. But it's always like, oh, thank you so much for how you've shown up for me. But I also have to remember, I bring a lot to the table and I'm constantly having to remember that. You know, sometimes we just take ourselves for granted. Um, who can I bless and who can I be blessed by? Yeah, I love that. And I definitely was blessed by you. Um, one, because I- Are we having a moment? You Are you having a <laughs> We're having a moment. Okay. Oh my God. One, because um, I was at the, the event, uh, the Austin Women's Way, right? And you were on stage. I was like, she is dope. Like, you were just up there being yourself. And I was like, who is that? Who is that? Um, and you were just talking. And I was like, okay, let me, one day I will meet her. One day I will meet her. And it was crazy that we were both at this penthouse. You know, I'd never been in a penthouse either. But I think the only difference was I told myself, same, I said, I belong here. And even though I've never been in a penthouse, I belong here. I deserve to be here. And one day I might even have my own penthouse too. All right. That I'll be inviting people to. But I think that was interesting because you were you were uh, meeting with who are you talking to? Uh, Viviani, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um that's that's my girl, right? And so it was like crazy. It was just like, oh, well, let me just let me just mosey on over here. Yeah. And yeah, we just connected and I truly was blessed by you too. And your energy, your spirit, I could tell you were just a really good person. You know, people can be on stage and they can be whoever they are. But when you really have a one-on-one -on -one with someone, you really get to know them. And I got to know you in that short amount of time. And here we are. Um, and I feel like it's really going to grow even yeah. more. Like, I, I truly can say I love you. And I love you too. Oh my God. Can I just say this out loud? I, I, oh my God. I just, I'm, I'm like hyperventilating. Hold on. Let me get it together, Voss. You're the host of a podcast. This is what I want to say. I so freely can tell anybody I love them because I can find something in anybody. I can find something in everyone that I love. And I love to just give it freely. But I, I notice, I notice it about myself. I have to wait to see first. Are you going to receive it? But screw that. I love you. And I didn't even need you to say it first, but I shouldn't have waited. I love you first. <laughs> I was waiting. Why do no. we wait? Why do we wait? I love you. Aww, I, I love really you have love. I have love for you. Like I really do. And it's like, I don't want to withhold my love because of shit that's happened in my life. You know, we tend to get hardened. And we're like, oh, I can't trust this person, can't trust this, or I can't give too much of myself. And I'm like, no, I don't want to withhold myself because that's not, that, that I'm withholding my blessings. I'm withholding my love. I'm like, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But I did say it first, though. You did. Okay, you did it first. No, you did. You did it first, I waited for you. I waited for you to say it, but you said it.
It's okay. No, I love that you said it. Oh, God. I just want everyone hearing this. Like, by the way, I just want to say this because I think, uh, I don't know if this is like a, I don't know if this is common in the black culture, but I know in the Indian culture, immigrant culture, families, everything, blah, blah, blah. We don't share our love openly with people outside of family. It's just reserved for family. And I say screw that because I have friends that I'm closer to than my own family. Oh, yeah. So why would I not? So I just want to say, like, thank you. I love you. I love you, too. But no, in the black culture, we okay. love everybody. Like, <laughs> we, we, you know, anybody come over to, well, not anybody, but uh, you come yeah, over yeah. to the family reunion, the barbecue and stuff. But, like, we love everybody, you know, and we share that with everybody. But, yeah, like, we have to show love. Like, you should show up in love every everywhere you go, no matter what. So, yeah, I appreciate that. I literally don't know where to go from here. I feel like we've covered everything from like almost dying to living again, to sharing love, to share. I mean, like I literally am like, as a host, I usually know when to wrap it up, but I kind of love talking to you so much that I'm like, wait, where do I want to go next? Okay, wait, wait, maybe we need to get coffee. Like, I don't know, but I just want to, no, but we don't have to like take up this whole time. I'm just kind of. No, we're good. Yeah, no, we're I good. Feel, I feel complete, honestly, like. Same. I mean, but this is not my show. This ain't my show. I feel complete and I just I want to say thank you for that because like we all have like I have an internal clock I can tell when it's like everything's been left on the table everything's out on the table there's like nothing left unsaid here unless actually that's usually my last question is there anything left unsaid for you that you want to just make sure like you gave it your all on this podcast I'm not saying you didn't but like is there anything left that you just like is there anything else otherwise are you complete we're good otherwise no I feel complete um the only thing that I like to say is just everybody, just make sure you always stay anchored in your faith. Um, you stay blessed. It's your girl, Dr. Carrie and Vasavi. I just, I just appreciate you for letting me come on to say it out loud. And I, I just pray that everybody was blessed by this episode. Thank you so much, Dr. Carrie, for people watching, listening to this, because we're going to show the video and the audio. How can people find you? How can they connect with you and start watching your videos and your blessings that you put out? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, you can go on Instagram mm -hmm. at dr underscore Carrie, dr mm -hmm. doctor underscore K E R I E. Um, mm -hmm. You can click the link in my bio and it'll take you to uh, my 30 day workbook that's on Amazon. Mm -hmm. It'll take you to my YouTube page. It'll also take you to any classes and replays and stuff that I've done for investing. But yeah, I, I love to help. I love to support. And if you need to email me, all that stuff is on my Instagram. But I'm your girl, Dr. Carrie. And I hope you follow me and I'll follow you back on Instagram. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Carrie, for being here on another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. It's been, it's been beyond fun. Thank you. Absolutely. You're welcome.